Well, yesterday didn't go exactly as I planned it. Um, I meant to record this video yesterday, but then Octopus went and announced the new Flux tariff, so I had to quickly record that video instead. So yeah, go check that out if you've no idea what Flux is all about. Uh, so I have some good news about my spreadsheet where I compare the cost uh, of Octopus Go versus the new Cozy Octopus tariff. Um, and I've made some updates. I've included solar output now, um, not real data. I've sort of fudged it a bit and I'll show you how I've done that uh, during this video. Um, I'm gonna try and keep this quick because uh, the last one was 43 minutes and uh, there's no need for it to be as long as that. So um, I'm gonna skip a lot of the details. So if you've not seen that first um, comparison video, go check that one out. So no more messing about, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the Cozy Octopus versus Go spreadsheet, but now with solar. So we've upgraded from COG to COGS. Yes, I am a genius with the naming. Uh, right, so this is much as it was before, um, except for a few small additions. Now, um, obviously the major thing that was missing um, in the last version was the solar power. Um, so what I've done is I've, um, I've created a new tab here called solar generation. Now I realize that in the historical data that I've obtained um, over the last 20 years worth of, of historical data for our particular region, uh, for th 13 of those years, there was this um, metric called solar energy. Now, uh, I had a look into it, and it's basically a measure of the amount of well sunshine on any given day. Um, however, the units aren't exactly applicable to what we need, which is kilowatt hours. But I realized that actually I could use this as a proxy for um, actual solar output because I have a, um, a an estimate of what our solar output should do from our installer, because obviously we don't yet have our our um, solar panels installed, but I have that initial estimate uh, document from, from my installer. So on this page of the initial report I got from my installer shows the typical average uh, output generation that I should be expecting from my array um, for each month of the year, um, totaled up into kilowatt hours. And you can see, obviously, you know, it's, it's quite low for January, up to the peak in June, and then back down to be um, very low again in December. So these values along the side here are something that I can use. So let's have a quick look at um, what my um, solar energy index looks like and average that up into these months to see how it compares. So back on my spreadsheet, you can see I've basically done that same averaging process um, and I've created this uh, little chart here, which is equivalent to the, the one I showed before. But you can see the numbers aren't quite the same. So um, before, the in the um, estimate from my installer, showed the June um, output somewhere in the region of um, 800 kilowatt hours per month. And the January and December one's down at about 100. So this looks a little bit low to me. So what I've done is I've added a little um, scale factor value here, which just takes everything and multiplies it up by this number. So if I put in a value of 1.3, you can see that bumps it up to just about just over 800 kilowatt hours, um, you know, in summer, and just over 100 kilowatt hours, or 100 thereabouts, 100 kilowatt hours in January and December. So um, let's go back quickly and check how that looks compared to the uh, the estimate from my installer. And you can see it matches pretty closely. So what I'm going to say is that that's not a bad first approximation of what of how we should be able to convert this solar energy index into um, kilowatt hours uh, output from my array. Obviously there's going to be a lot of details missing in here in terms of the, the, the profile during the day, but let's go with this and use it as a, as a reasonable proxy measure um, and see how far we can get on. So what I've done is I've added that um, historical output of uh, solar energy index into the cost calculation tab and it's actually hidden behind here in this column um, called solar energy. Um, and it runs all the way down here. And what I've had to do is actually truncate this back to 2010 because uh, this index didn't appear in the data until 2010. So I've lost a few years of data, which is slightly annoying, um, but I've still got 13 years of data, so that's okay. Uh, and then I've got this scale factor, which is the one I showed on that previous page, but um, now this will now enable us to vary the amount of solar output we um, we add into our simulation um, to see how it affects the, the calculation that we did in the previous video. Um, so as you can see here, I've converted the, uh, the actual solar index into solar output um, in kilowatt hours here, and you can see it's all zero because the scale factor is currently zero. If I put 1.3 in, which is what I think is appropriate for our particular system, 
um, you can see that uh, it generates some sensible numbers. Um, but for now, I'm just going to set that back to zero because I'll, uh, I'll, what I'm going to do is add these in bit by bit and show you what this, um, how the solar affects the calculation along with the battery storage and all that other stuff. So uh, let's go back up to the top and show um, what we showed in the previous video, which is this uh, sort of chart showing historical demand, um, uh, sorry, heating demand um, in the winter versus the total cost of each of the three tariffs that we're considering here, standard, go and cozy. I've not yet added flux in, um, into this because that is going to require a much more complicated calculation, I'm pretty sure. Uh, in order to do it properly, I'm going to need half hourly data. So it might take me a while to get all of that um, uh, calculation done. Um, so yeah, please bear with me. It might take a little while. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to ignore flux and just stick with the standard go and cozy tariffs. Um, and you can see this is what we had before. Um, and uh, I think what I've done here, yep, yeah, I've uh, I've set the battery capacity to zero, and um, I've set the scale factor for the solar generation to zero. So this is a bit like having no solar panels and no battery storage. Uh, and you can see the total cost, the averaged over the 13 years of data, the historical data that I've got, the total cost comes out at just shy of uh, 2,700 pounds for the standard tariff. Um, just over £2,130 for the Go and £2,170-ish for the Cozy tariff. So um, Go and Cozy, pretty similar um, and slightly better than the standard tariff by a few hundred pounds. Um, and you can see why that is because um, here where the heating demand is very low, um, Go and Cozy are absolutely definitely better than, than the standard tariff. And it's only when you get way up into the really high heating demand that Go becomes more expensive than standard and Cozy is better when the um, heating demand is anything above about seven or eight kilowatt hours on each given day. So, okay, let's go and add uh, the, the components that um, are, I'm gonna get installed in the next two or three weeks, which is the battery and the uh, solar panels. So let's add in the battery uh, and I'm getting a nine and a half kilowatt hour give energy battery and a 5.2 kilowatt hour give energy battery. But the 5.2 kilowatt hour, I think, is only 80% depth of discharge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the assumption that um, I'm going to have a usable capacity of about 13 and a half kilowatt hours. Let's chuck that in there. And then I'm also going to add back in our solar output, which is 1.3 to give us um, something sensible. And now what do we have? Okay, so well, let's uh, let's show the chart along with the uh, along with the, the values here. So you can see that now, um, Cozy and Go are significantly cheaper to uh, to run over the, over the course of a year than the standard tariff. And Go is um, definitely cheaper for when the heating demand is is very low, and Cozy is better when the heating demand is above about eighteen kilowatt hours. Um, and over the course of average over a year, so that's both obviously during the summer and the winter. So I'm assuming you know you don't change your tariff at all here. Uh, the standard tariff has come down to uh, 1,750 pounds a year, but Go is now only just over 600 pounds a year, which is amazing. And Cozy is about 800 pounds a year. So the conclusion from my previous video was that Go was going to be a better tariff for us, and that is confirmed with by adding solar in now. That's uh, that's definitely the case. Um, uh, but yeah, Cozy is also uh, very good. Um, but let's see, in the previous video, we, we broke that down into months. So let's see if that's changed at all. So I'm going to scroll all the way across. I've duplicated this chart because this spreadsheet is getting so big now that I need the chart in more than one place so that I can actually see it at all times. Uh, so, okay, so now let's see what we've got. Um, the monthly breakdown shows uh, Go is now cheaper all the way through the year, which is um, fantastic. Uh, so that's um, that's really good to know, uh, and uh, it means that um, there's really no reason for us to switch to Cozy at any time. Um, so yeah, that's really um, valuable information for me, and it confirms my initial um, suspicion that uh, we should be uh, sticking with um, Octopus Go, um, which is great. Um, so yeah, one quick thing to uh, to show here, I've actually used the off-peak um, Octopus Go tariff of, of 12 pence here. I think that's the current rate. Uh, we're currently on 7.5 pence. So actually, if I put 7.5 pence in, let's see how that changes the calculation. Um, and you can see that now um, actually Go is down to 450 pounds, which is uh, fantastic. So um, let's very quickly do that comparison in reverse. So uh, let's, um, let's put this back to 12 pence and put this back to zero and put this back to zero. So what did we have? We had... Uh, give it a second to calculate. 
So, okay, so we've got £2,687 for the standard tariff, let's assume. Um, and let's go and add in our battery capacity of 13.5 and the scale factor of 1.3. Let it calculate. And go is now £627. So what's the difference between that? Well, we've got the standard tariff with no battery or solar minus go. So we're basically saving ourselves £2,000 a year. So that's amazing. Um, that's uh, that's incredible. That means that, um, that we have actually a very good chance of all of this equipment paying for itself um, over over a sensible number of years. So just to give you an idea, I think our total, I don't I haven't completely added it all up yet, but I think the total cost of um, the solar panels, the battery storage, and the heat pump heating system that we had installed recently is gonna to come to somewhere in the region of 25,000 pounds. So let's put that in there. So let's take that total value and divide it by how much we're saving each year. And that gives us a, um, a payback time of about 12 years, which is fantastic. Um, I actually wasn't expecting to be able to pay off or to you know pay for effectively pay for the install of our um, heating system, um, I was thinking maybe we'd pay off the uh, the battery and the uh, the solar install, but probably not the uh, the heating system. But this goes to show that actually when you combine um, an an air, an air source heat pump system with decent battery and solar, you can get some some good savings. And um, in fact, it leverages those uh, those other technologies even more. So it does actually enable you to potentially um, pay off your your heat pump system, which is really interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so yeah, there's one other thing I want to show you very quickly, and that's the uh, the actual daily output um, for an example year. So this is um, the example from 2021 to 2022. So uh, starting in summer 2021 and going to summer 2022, and um, you can see here this is the approximation for using my you know very rough and ready. Um, estimate of what output we should be getting from our solar panels from day to day and you can see it's going up as high as sort of 30 plus kilowatt hours in the summer and then down to almost nothing in the winter. I've got our um, heating demand in that red line um, from the previous uh, video if you're if you want to see um, the example before I add the solar in uh, what that looks like and then I've taken um, the heating demand and I've assumed that the um, any excess solar power were, could be used to uh, to power the heat pump during sunny days, and that's what gives you the uh, yellow um, uh, outline there. So that's all very interesting, um, but it's quite spiky and noisy, so that's not super useful. But let's average that up over the 13 years of data that we've got, and we get this chart. So this is averaging um, each day over those 13 years and giving a um, giving a value for each of the days in this um, in this sort of average year here. Uh, and you can see that um, we, things are a bit smoother now and easier to see what's going on. So this is our solar output. And you can see this sort of shaded green area is what, we, what we're able to use from that excess solar power that we're, um, that we're getting from, uh, from our solar panels um, that we can then use for our heating. So that actually opens up this gap here between the red line and this yellow shaded area. All of that space there is now covered by solar power, which is fantastic. And the one thing that you will notice here is that actually the gap over this side is significantly wider than the gap over this side. And that's because of this lag between temperature and daylight that we see throughout the year. So although the, the, um, the, the lowest point of, um, of the solar generation is going to be um, late December, so roughly 21st, 22nd of December, so that's about here, obviously, um, but the lowest temperatures are typically late January. So around about here, and that's where our um, heating demand is going to be highest. But that means that obviously uh, it stays colder for you know into into March and April. But the sunshine is becoming uh, stronger um, earlier than it is you know in the autumn. So in the autumn, the sun starts to disappear before it starts to get really cold. But in the spring, the sun starts to appear while it's still cold, which means we actually benefit from the from um, solar panels uh, for the purposes of heating much more in the spring than we do in the autumn, and that's what you can see in this chart, which I think is is absolutely fascinating, uh, and it and it shows that um, we're very likely to um, need much less energy in the spring for our heating uh, than we did in the autumn. 
So I thought that was a really interesting chart, and I hope you do too. Uh, obviously, this this whole calculation, this spreadsheet, has a lot of assumptions um, and a lot of simplifications. So this is not a perfect representation of what we're likely to see, of course. Um, so yeah, I will caveat that and say, um, in order to do this really properly, I will need actual data from my solar panels. Ideally, I'd break it down half hourly and do it properly so that we can, any excess solar that we don't use for heating or our house base load during the day can be saved for the following day. That's not included in this. So yeah, there, there are probably more benefits to having the solar panels and the battery storage than I've actually shown in this particular spreadsheet. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is about as far as I can take it using sort of daily data. Um, if I want to try and integrate the Octopus Flux tariff into this, I'm definitely going to need to do this half hourly. That is going to take a lot of work, um, and I might need to grab a huge amount of historical data from uh, from the source that I that I found online. Go and check the previous video if you want to know more about that. Um, so yeah, it's going to take me a while, but um, with any luck, I'll, I'll I'll have something to show you at some point in the future. I can't specify when, um, but yeah. For the time being, I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. And uh, you know, if you if you did, please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.